you guys fill in the blanks here. Uh, we'll start from day one, basic reflections. Uh, what do you think you're going to be responsible to reflect over? What are choices I could ask you to reflect over tomorrow? X, X and Y axes, yep. Y equals X, know the rule. Will? Yep, so I'm going to just say any vertical or horizontal line. And also Y equals negative X, know the rule. Now look, I have no sympathy for you guys tomorrow if you forget what Y equals and X equals, whether it's horizontal or vertical, you graph it if you have any issues and look at it on your grapher, right? Graph it if you're wondering, oh, is X equal three a vertical or a horizontal? Graph the darn thing. There's no excuse, no excuse with that tomorrow. All right, so yep, so those are all the basic reflections we went over. Then you have honors reflections tomorrow. Honors reflections. Which could come in one of two forms, right? It could come in and I know this is just a sketch, but here's A, here's A prime. Find the line of reflection. Find the line of reflection. Or the other type it could come in is here's point B. Here's the line of reflection. Where's B prime? And notice my line of reflection is not any of these basic ones. So be prepared for both tomorrow. All right, be prepared for both. Uh, let's see, and then we move to translations. Make sure you know all three notations, specifically function versus vector notation. I may have you to leave your answers in either one. There's the other type of notation too, which is the capital T. I'm not gonna have you leave it in that because I don't have a name for it, but I certainly could say perform this on this point. We gotta know it's a translation, uh, right two, down three. Uh, and then we have yesterday rotations, uh, plus or minus 90, plus or minus 180, plus or minus 270. All right, make sure we can go both directions. And then finally, what we're going to do today, which is honors rotations, which is what if we go something other than 90, 180, and 270. All right, any questions? That's a brief recap. The homework tonight is mixed review. It's not a lot, but at least it's mixed review from all of these. All right, there's no delta math. I'm just going kind of a clean slate for you guys to walk into tomorrow. If you need any help on any of these, just come in today. This is what's, what I like. I think I've told you this already, but what I like about this unit is I don't need to make up a delta math. If you have a problem doing this, you know what? We're going to make up the coordinates and then say, okay, let's do it. All right, I don't need to give you a prepared, printed out uh, example. If you want to come in and sit with me after school, we'll just say, all right, let's go pick a point, pick a line. Pick an equation of a line. Let's flip it over. Anything you guys want to ask? We're good? Before we get to honors, rotations today. I say honors, but I call it honors because I don't do it with my AB class. I don't think it's – it's not as tough as the this day. But. All right, you ready? All right, let's jump right into it. What do you say? Uh, Wait, what? If you don't do the two days, like the honors stuff, what do you do with them? We just keep going on. Well, put it this way. Uh, we had a review day. We did review. Their quiz was today. So we reviewed for it yesterday. So with that, you know, you'll end the unit a day later than they will, but who cares? All right. Who cares? Uh, all right. We ready? Honors rotations. What happens if I don't ask you to go 918270? So I'll introduce you to uh, regular Pentagon Penta. Regular Pentagon. What do you know again? Back from our unit. Six days. All sides are equal and all e all angles are equal. And I tell you, it's divided into five congruent triangles. That's going to be important here coming up. So I want to start with vertice E. Can you rotate it? Oh, 72 degrees. 
Not 90, 180, or 270, so sorry, Linda. Can't be doing this. All right, can't be doing this. All right, that's only for 90, 180, and 270. I want 72 degrees. All right, so where do I end up if I take vertice E and rotate it 72? Well, one thing we do know, which direction are we going to rotate? Counterclockwise, because it's positive 72, right? So at least we know we're going to rotate counterclockwise. But 72? 72 degrees. How, I, how am I going to know exactly when I hit 72? Well, let's go back to the fact that, hey, I have five congruent triangles here, which means by CPCTC, aren't all of these angles right here equal? Everyone agree? No, because the triangles are equal, those angles are equal. And those angles match the number of degrees I go when I go from vertice to vertice. So what I'm going to ask your help with right now is, can we find the number of degrees I would rotate to go from P to A, A to T, T to N? As I go from one vertice to the next adjacent vertice, how many degrees am I going? Well, all of these are the same, aren't they? Every time I rotate from vertice to vertice, it's the same. And if you go all the way around from P to P, how many degrees am I going? If I rotate from point P all the way back to point P in a full circle, I'm going how many degrees? 360, right? And I just proved to you every time I go from one vertice to the next, it's the same amount of degrees every time. So let's see, I go one, two, three, four, five times, right? and it totals up to 360, and it's the same degree every time. So I'm going to take that 360 all the way around, divide it by five times, five rotations, and look at the magic number that comes out. 360 divided by five? 72 degrees. So every time you go vertice to, vert to the next adjacent vertice, it's going to be a 70-degree rotation. Now can I answer this question a little bit easier? Darn right I can. So if you start at point E, where do I end up after a 72 degree rotation going counterclockwise? Going counterclockwise. Where do I end up at? Whew, a little help here, Will. Where do I end up? Vertice, point P, yep. We see how that worked now. I know 72 is a little odd, but hey, at least I know it's every vertice. I go 72 degrees. Whoa! 216? I know about 72 now, but not 216. How can that? 216, anyway? Where's that coming into play? 216. We know 72, but where's 216 coming into play? Thoughts, suggestions? Ziv? So you're, oh, wait a second. So if I go from P to A, that's 72. A to T, that's another 72. So when I went from P to T, that's 144. And then I go another 72. So as I went from P all the way to N, I add up three of those, and that's going to be my 216. So it's just a multiple of, two, of 72. That's all it was. 216 is just a multiple of 72. And I just gave away the answer there, didn't I? It's going to be point N. So I just happened to start from point P. Nope. Now... I'm not always going to have to deal with a hexagon. I mean, a pentagon. Take a look at the next one. Now I'm going to deal with an octagon. Eight's up. Huh, that's clever. I know. Eight sides. So now what would be my degree of rotation from vertice to adjacent vertice? Not 72 anymore. I do a little work off the side. Still going 360 all the way around. But now how many vertices do I have? Eight vertices. So that tells me when you go to one vertice to an adjacent one, that'll be a... Not 72 degree rotation. Thank you. 45 degree rotation. 
and I am going to let you and your group go through one through six right now. Go ahead. Now that you know every vertice is a rotation of 45 degrees, let's do it. Let's do it. Mr. Cohen, yeah. Is there going to be any two-dimensional stuff in this? Could be, yeah. What do you mean? Like you rotate like the multiple choices we did at the end of yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fair game. Is that all right or no? It's all right. Okay. I uh, will that be multiple choice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are always multiple choice. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of class yesterday, we did the if I take a square that's got sides of seven, rotate it around one of its sides. What's it become? A cylinder with a radius of seven. Yeah. Yeah. Those will always be multiple choice. And as you get to number four, yeah, we can rotate segments. Rotate in a hey, don't let, don't freak out. Rotating a segment is just like rotating two points now. All right, just rotate its endpoints and see where you end up. So don't get freaked out. All set? Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go through here. Uh, question one, where do we end up at? What vertice do I end up at? Question one, uh, Haley, where do we end up at? Oh, I. Uh, good work. Uh, question two, now we're going 225 degrees. What vertice do I end up with? Gianna, where'd you end up? Um, 225, how many? So that's how many rotations of 45? Five, right? So you're going from U, five rotations. Where do we end up? I. I again. Yep. Good. Got it there. Perfect. Uh, number three. Now we're going to 315 degrees. Where do we end up, uh, Charlie? I. Ah, there you go. Anybody thinking they're doing anything wrong? Uh, answer's not I for the next one because this is a segment. So if I take EI, rotate it 270, where do we end up, Josh? GH. GH or HG. Yep. Uh, all right, 135 around point S. Ooh, where am I going there? Doyle, that's point G, good. And then how about this last one, huh? 360. Zoe? Yeah, right where you started, right? How many of you divided that by 45 and started counting? You're like, oh, I start right back at the beginning. You wouldn't admit to it anyway. All right, what do you say now? Let's see a couple other different versions here. We did a lot of rotating. We can also do some reflections here, all right, that are not on the graph. All right, you, you guys are starting to see we are not on the graph at all today. So I'm going to take triangle ABC here, and this is a regular hexagon. Hexagon. So I'm going to take triangle ABG here, and we're going to reflect it over BG. So let's do that first before I get to the second half of this problem. We're going to reflect it over BG. What triangle am I at now? So I've taken triangle ABG, reflected over BG. Where am I now? That reflects it to which triangle? Zoe, back to you. What do you have? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want, we're not there. I just want to know, I'm doing this step by step. So I'm taking ABG and I'm reflecting it over BG. And my question to you is what triangle am I at now? So I take ABG, reflect it over BG. It moves to which triangle in the diagram now? 
BG, BGD, EGD. E All right, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to reflect it over this line, right? B and G are on it, so it stays. Where would A go? Two, C. So now I'm on this triangle. Yep, everyone's good. So now I'm on that triangle after that reflection. Now rotate it 180. And remember, this is a hexagon. So if you did it real quick, that's 60 degrees every time. So what triangle do I end up with, with after 180 degree rotation? Ooh, let's go one more up here. Aiden? FEG. FEG, yep. So I end up at FEG. Those are good. I love these problems. Little reflection and rotation, same problem. Any issues there? Going? All right. Uh, now I got an honors level. Nope, not yet. Not yet. That's coming up. I'm one slide ahead of myself. All right. Welcome to my equilateral triangle. I would like to know how many degrees I can rotate it. Minimum, minimum degrees I can rotate this so it carries it on to itself. Let's talk about that word, that term first. What's it mean to carry it on to itself? Everyone sees the equilateral triangle I have given you. I would like to know how many degrees I can rotate it so it looks like that didn't even move. I get that right. I get that equilateral triangle back. So for instance, somebody would say 90, 90. What if I rotate at 90? All right, if I rotate that 90, that does not look like the same triangle I just gave you. I want to know how many degrees, I, minimum, minimum, because I know 360, everyone agrees 360 would work. I'm going to just turn the whole thing around. But that's not the minimum amount of degrees I could rotate it. The minimum amount of degrees I can rotate this so I get this triangle back. It, look, it, it should look like it never moved should look like it never moved, all right? So I don't want it just turned a little bit and now my vertices are going this way, all right? So first, can we just get a quick definition down of what carried on to itself means? Because that's a term you're gonna hear more and more of. Carried on to itself, and I know this is not very mathematical, looks like it never moved. So again, I don't know if this helps with me actually turning it. So that won't, right? I want the same exact thing back. So I'm talking like this. How many degrees did I just rotate that? Let me do it again. I'll go. Can you help me find what that degree measure is that I... Uh... Minimum, minimum, because we all know 360 works, and yes, it's an answer, but not here because it's not the minimum amount. What's up, Sue? Where's that coming from? Because you rotate it three times, it has to be three times to get to one point, the original state again. So I think what Ziva's saying to us is hey, if you just rotate this vertice down to this one, you're going to get that same triangle back. Nothing in between. Because I'll get a different looking one. The only way I'm going to get this same looking one back is if I rotate this vertice to here, this vertice to here, and this vertice back up here. Everyone agrees? Well, how many degrees is that? 360 all the way around. And how many times am I rotate, rotating it for every vertice? Three times. So I could take 360. And yes, divide it by three. Kind of like what we've been doing all today. And that's where the 120, minimum 120 comes in. What are some other possibilities? 120. What else, Will? 240, 360. Guys, we could keep adding 120 forever and we'd still get that triangle back, but the directions do say what's the minimum amount. So that's why 120 is our final answer. Anything here, because we're, we're kind of taking it to the honor circle here today. What if you wanted it at zero degrees? I guess so. Right, we're, I think we're always looking for a non. You do count that like on plus and get special. It's only just like zero. Uh, probably not, you're not rotating it though, right? It does say if it's rotated, so I guess we could be uh, we could have words uh, our war with words. 
because it's got to be rotated, which it's got to be turned. So I just don't think you can leave it like that. I think it's got to be turned somehow. All right, so that's my comeback, I guess. All right, uh, let's keep doing uh, another problem with this onto itself concept. Here I have a rectangle ABCD. I have four choices down here. Which one will not, keyword there, not carry it, this rectangle onto itself? So on, bottom line, I'm going to get a new rectangle after I do it. And I'm not going to get the one that looks like currently in front of us. So can we go through each of these and see what type of rectangle we get back? Because three of them are going to give us the same one. The fourth one's going to give us a different one. Ooh, a little quiz review. Reflection over y equals x. What do I do with the coordinates? If we don't know now. What do I do? With, what's my rule when I reflect over that line? Flip them, right? Going into tomorrow, flip them. All right, so somebody can somebody tell me what point A is there? What's point A? It's one, seven, one, right? So you, when I, if I did reflect it, it should go to... One seven. Is there something at one seven? Is there something at one seven? Yeah, it's point D. So yeah, A would move to D. D would move to A. B would move to C. C would move to B. Is this going to be a different rectangle? Nope, same one. So that would carry it on to itself. Good so far? All right, how about uh, choice two? Reflect it over Y equals negative X plus 10. Uh, can we get an idea of what that looks like? What's your Y intercept? 10. Slope of, what's my slope for this line? Negative one, so down one over one. Everyone seeing this line that's starting to form here? Down one over one, here's your line of reflection. You guys tell me, take a point, reflect it over that line. Is it gonna go somewhere else other than on the rectangle already? No, I think A is gonna go to B, C is gonna go to D, D is gonna go to C, we're gonna still get that rectangle. So we're still good. None of them yet have changed the rectangle. They have carried it onto itself. You ready for three? A rotation of 180, but not around the origin. So you can't turn your paper here. Not around the origin, around 6-6. Six, six. Everyone find where that point is, 6-6, six, because six, that's what I'm going to rotate around. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There it is, 6-6. Six, six. I'm going to rotate it around that point. All right, let's talk where point A would go. 180, which is directly on the other side, right? A straight line opposite it. Somewhere on the other side, 180, right? We know, we know straight line, 180. Is that going to land on the rectangle? A, a prime is going to be somewhere over here, guys. I don't know where, but definitely somewhere over here, not on the original rectangle. So do we see that this one here will not carry it onto itself? Yes? Okay, well, not good enough for me in an honors class. Why does four work then? It's the same thing, but just through a different point. Take a look where five, five is. Look where five, five is. See where it is now? Now, where would A go if you did a 180 degree rotation through that point? Where's A gonna go? Over to C. And the same thing, B to D, D to B. So see the difference why the one choice four would carry it onto itself versus choice three does not. Okay, good talk. All right, I'm going to do a heck of a lot less talking on this one. This is a great honors level question. We know how to rotate a point. Can we rotate a line? Darn, darn right we can because, hey, what's a line made up of? Infinite points. So if you can rotate points, you can rotate a line. So I have line H. Here's line H. It is 2X plus Y equals 1. That's line H. What are we going to do to it? And you guys don't have to do what I'm right. You don't have to. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees and call it line M. 
I want the equation to line up. After a 90 degree rotation. Well, I guess maybe we should probably get a visual and graph this, right? That's probably why I need your graph paper to look at a visual. Uh, I'm not too comfortable graphing this. You guys want to get into y equals form for me? y equals, what, negative 2x when you subtract the 2x over plus 1? Feel comfortable graphing that? What's your y-intercept? 1. You guys can also go on your graphing calculator and do it. I just want to get do it quick, I guess. Slope of 2, negative 2, so down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1 for a couple more points. So here is line H. All right, I need your help. How am I going to get to line M after I rotate that 90 degrees? And this is the last thing I'm going to say to give you help. In this class this year, we have always, always said, if you're going to write the equation of any line, what are the two things you need? I need the slope and, okay, and that's where I'm going to leave it. That's where I'm going to leave it right now. How can you help me find both? What's the slope of this line and the y-intercept? Knowing the equation of the other line and you're about to rotate at 90 degrees. You need to find the slope for me and I need your help finding the y-intercept. Any thoughts whatsoever to get either one of those? Probably want to start with the slope because I need the slope to get to the y intercept. Matt, thoughts? Uh, the negative reciprocal. Why negative reciprocal? Why are you busting out that term? Perpendicular. How do you know it's going to be perpendicular? Because we're going to do rotate at what? We're rotating this 90 degrees. So line H and when I rotate it, line M are going to be 90 degree rotation. They're going to form a right angle. Good job, Matt. Slope of this line is negative 2. You want to keep going? What's the slope of line M now? One half. One half. Good. All right, everyone's all right. So one half. How are you going to get your y-intercept now? Same way we've been getting it all year, guys. Same way we've been getting it all year. We're going to use y equals mx plus b. We're going to keep, we're going to solve for B. We're going to plug in one half for the M, the slope. All right, now I'm going to turn this back over to you. Y and X have to be a point on line M. Okay, I don't want to plug in a point from line H, right? I don't want to plug in zero, one. I don't want to plug in one, negative one. I want to plug in a point that I know is on line M. So how can you get a point on line M? What are you doing to this line? You're rotating at 90. Go. Rotate at 90 right now. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. So after you rotate your paper right now, guys, you are staring at line M right now. That's what it's going to look like when we go back to the beginning. You are staring at line M. Anybody got a point off that line now? A solid point that you know? There's a couple, Doyle. One one. one, one. Yep. Anybody have anything else you, we could use? One, one, or what was another solid point on there? One, one was definitely a point. How about, I don't know, I could do three, two, it looks like. Or I could do negative one, zero. But there you go. Pick any of those points right now and plug it in for Y and X and solve for B. Go ahead. So you rotated your paper 90 degrees. You're looking at line M right now. Pick a point off it. Yeah, I'm going to stare at them so if they feel awkward. You know, if they walk by. No, I guess not. Lucky that. All right, finding your y intercept.
Uh, let's see, what point do I want to use? Doyle, what point you give me? Uh, one okay, I'll use yours. One half is the, is the y-intercept for line m, yep. So here's line m. y equals one-half x plus one-half. Can I ask you a challenge question? Yeah, I can, because you're in honors. What if I said I'm going to rotate at 180? Write the equation of the line after I rotate it 180. You want to do it yourself right now? You want to rotate it 180 or you already know this? See? It's the same, line. same line, right? Same line. That point's going across, that point's going across. Yeah, same line. Yep, same line if I ask for 180. Good job, kids. Good job. What about 270? 270? Same as 90. Yeah, because 90, you add another 180, you get 270. Yeah. It's going to be 1 half x plus 1 half. Look at you kids. Nice! Nice talking a little honors level math with you. Until we get to this last one now. Let's see what you got now without me saying anything. All right, I have this triangle ABC I'm going to start out with. It says uh, we're going to go to triangle DEF. How do I get there? How do I move this triangle to DEF? I'm going to do a what? Reflection. All right, does, notice it doesn't say what I'm reflecting over because it does not matter here. And then finally, I'm going to take triangle DEF, do something to it, and get to triangle XYZ. How do I get to XYZ? A translation, doesn't matter how many up, up, down, left, and right I go. What am I going to know about my pre-image, ABC, and my image, XYZ? What should I know about them? And the hint is, look what we did to them. Look what we did to them. Reflection, does that change size or shape? Nope, it's a rigid motion. Translation. Change size or shape? No, so what we did doesn't change the size or shape to triangle ABC. What do we think our answer is then? Definitely congruent, right? Are they similar? Yeah, you know my rule, right? If they're congruent, they're similar. So they're both congruent and similar. All right, you got plenty of time here to start the mixed review, which should help you prepare for tomorrow, but it's not a, I'm telling it's not a solid review. So don't think you're good to go if you do the homework, all right? Because the whole I tell you, the homework does not have your honors reflections we talked about. So you definitely want to go back and review those. All right, it does not have your honors reflections we talked about. I don't think there's anything in there. All right, get going.